Okay, in the last video, I briefly mentioned Ephesians 5, 8, and 11. Ephesians 5, verses 8 and 11, which reads, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. And so the point I was making is that there is identity teaching, I believe, in the New Testament. Uh, without a doubt, there's identity teaching. But it's also there's also correction right there with it. And what I've noticed is that a lot of uh, ministers are, are teaching identity seem to leave out the correction. <laughs> so I'm just looking to bring balance. I, so I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with them that there's identity. There is identity teaching, but there needs to be balance. And so that's a scripture that shows balance right there. And there are other scriptures. So I'm going to read from uh, a couple more, you know, some more scripture and talk about this in, in, uh, as it relates to the minister going in the marketplace and ministering to people. Because there's a lot of, and I'll never stop saying, I'll never stop propagating this because there are many Christians that that just minister to each other in the church they you know in the four walls of the building where they think that obedience is going to church fellowshipping reading your Bible paying their tithes and uh, volunteering here and there and but mo many Christians will find themselves just ministering to other Christians in that setting but God wants all of his people out in the marketplace the highways and the byways talking to people as they're led by the Spirit. And that's important, being led by the Spirit, because I've made so many, I've been in so many situations that that I just wanted to, I wanted to put a sign on display, I wanted to do something, and it just didn't turn out too well. Uh, in fact, I'm going to read a scripture right now and then to give a testimony of that. Now, so, so we are light in the Lord, and we want people to be able to recognize this light. 1 John 2, 9 says, The one who says he is in the light, and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. And so there are many Christians that that think they're in the light. Because they're, and they're partially because they're believing the message about identity that doesn't have the correction. So if there's no correction, then there's just nothing you can do wrong, right? I mean, what can I do wrong? You know, because the Bible doesn't have any of that correction. <laughs> well, there's correction everywhere in the New Testament. And I've said it over and over, the letters in the epistles were originally known as letters of correction. It's everywhere in the New Testament besides the identity teaching. And so this verse reminds me of the verse that says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, but in the end it leads to death. And so we, we have to make sure that we're walking in forgiveness and love, forgiving people, doing the right thing always, doing the right thing always in the eyes of the Lord. And oftentimes when you're out ministering in a marketplace, you don't really get the chance to fully equip people that you're ministering to because most people don't want to be discipled by you. Okay, you'll get into a situation in the marketplace and the power of God can touch somebody and they'll be really happy about it. But when, when you leave, when you go your separate ways, you don't know how much that person is going to pursue the truth. This is the reason why also Jesus rebuked the people of certain towns who didn't repent. He, you know, he said they were going to hell. Woe to you, Gores, and woe to you, Bethsaida. And, uh, because they weren't repenting after seeing the sign. And so... We want to be able to disciple people as much as we can, you know, in the situation. And, uh, and, you know, most of the discipling I've done has been actually through these videos, through believers that agree with this, agree with the ministry of the Spirit, and want to minister to more people in the marketplace. And so the, te the teaching videos and the healing videos have helped them along the way to grow. And so most of my discipleship has come through people watching the videos and not necessarily the people themselves that I'm ministering to in the marketplace. So uh, <clears throat> there's, here's a great example of what I just read. Uh, the one who says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is in the darkness until, until now. I, I've made many mistakes. I, I ministered to somebody maybe a half a year ago, and uh, he got blasted by the power of God. He was so excited. He, I, you know, he I explained the gospel. He believed the message, got baptized I baptized him. I was discipling him. He was. We were in contact, and then he just he just fell away because he couldn't love people. He said to me a number of times, and I I overlooked it, even though I knew the scripture verse. I didn't I didn't really overlook it. I just was patient with it, patient with him, trying to get him to turn from that. But he would often say, "I just don't like people," 
He said that often. I, I just hate people. I don't like people. And it's like so. It's like he doesn't. He, he, he thought he was in the light, but he's, he remains in darkness. And so it, it reminds me of Acts, with Simon the sorcerer, where Philip was went to Samaria and he was doing great signs and wonders. And Philip was a uh, or. Simon the sorcerer was amazed. He was following Philip around everywhere. He believed the message. He was baptized, but his heart wasn't right. Because when Peter and John came down, uh, Peter says, "I can to, to Simon because he wanted to buy the power of the Holy Spirit." He says, "You you you have no part in this ministry. I can see that your heart is not right before God. You are full of bitterness and captive to sin." And so, like, I was in a situation like that a half a year ago, and it's like it wasn't a true conversion even though it seemed right and the power was there. You know, and that's why I'm also turning away from like the bells and whistles and the feelings and all, you know, the warm fuzzy feelings because it's the healing is not in the warm fuzzy feelings. It's in with the word of God doing its work and the person receiving believing that word and walking in that word. It's a marriage of faith. I've said it many times, right? All right, Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So light. We're talking about light here. And so when you get the word of God in you, you you are light. Like the word says, you are light in the Lord. In the Lord, not outside of the Lord. You you have to remain in him in order for you to be the light of the Lord. And so and so the word is a lamp to my feet. And so when you have the word of God in you, your feet are are lit up. Even though you may not see that with your natural eyes, they're lit up because you're, they're, you're walking, you're going, you're, it's, you're, it's a do gospel. So you're being a doer of the gospel. That's why it says, your word is a lamp to my feet. Feet, feet moving <laughs> emphasizes you're doing what the word says. And, and then uh, those, those lamps light up the path before you. And so the word says that he has created good works in advance for us to walk in. And so... When we have the word in us, in our feet, our lamps, lighting our path, we're led by the Holy Spirit into these encounters. I just came back from Walmart and was in an encounter with a with a, a, an employee there. As soon as I walked in, hop, walking, hobbling, and prayed for her, and the, the, what she called was neuropathy was going away as she walked away. And but she was an employee. She believed in Jesus. And, and uh, so she received, but I didn't have time to stand and talk to her because she was war working. And so it was just an encounter, uh, just, just a half hour ago. Uh, Psalm 119, 130. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. The unfolding of your words. And so you have to have the Word of God in you really well so that you can unfold those words to the person you're ministering to, which means you're, you can explain that word accurately to the person you're ministering to. And uh, it's like you can, like, if you read the Gospel of John once, that doesn't mean you have the Gospel of John in you. You have to read it over and over and over. This is not so, it's 24 7 Jesus, His Word, us growing in it, us doing it. There's no, there's no, in between time, it's 24-7. If you want to be a believer that's effective, that's the way it is. I'm not saying you can't sit down and watch it in, in a movie because the Word says He gives us entertainment. You know, He provides entertainment for us. And so, but as long as it's a good movie. <laughs> um, so, all right. So, Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights in the world. So you're, to the people you're ministering to, there is something that they see in you. There's light. And, and then when you unfold God's word properly before them and, and show a sign, because Jesus says, I will confirm my word with signs that accompany it. So it all works symbiotically with it, 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 you know, and, and the Lord will do this through you. And so they're seeing light. And then when that word is unfolded and, they, and the sign confirms it, it's like more light. More light enters them and they're intrigued. And then they want to grow in the knowledge of truth and they want to repent. And so, and, and it's, so it, says, it says there again, do all things without grumbling or disputing so that, all right? So it goes on to say, so that, you know, and so there's a, there's a caveat. So you're not, you see, 
people that are preaching identity without the correction, they don't like the word caveat because caveat shows your responsibility and your accountability. And so Philippians 2, 14 and 15, it starts off by saying that it's a caveat. So you can you grumble, you got to get rid of grumbling and disputing so that that light does shine through you. And then one more scripture verse, John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And so this all works together for this. And so, so like when you're, when you're doing the word of God and, in a, and you, and you got that word in you in a balanced way then the words, then you're abiding in Jesus and his words are abiding in you and then you can ask whatever you wish. And that applies to your own personal prayer requests, but it also applies to what you're doing in the marketplace when you're ministering to people. You're, so that what you're asking for and what you're declaring will come to pass because the Lord knows that you're, you've got that word in you and that you're abiding in him and uh, he'll do it for you and you'll see the glory of the Lord. And so, so like, uh, just a this is a quick just a quick teaching on light and and the reason why I'm emphasizing light is because the Holy Spirit is emphasizing light because as we get closer to the end there's going to be more and more of a distinction between those who serve the Lord and those who serve Him not all right and so the unbelieving world is going to see the true sons of God manifest because there'll be there'll be a brightness about them a light about them that is undeniable. And, uh, and so when you believe these scripture verses and focus on them and meditate on them, then it, they become more of a reality. You get what you believe. And so I'm, I'm going to put these scripture verses in the, the, the description box of the YouTube video of this YouTube video on my channel, Carbo Box Church. And uh, I, don't, I haven't done that much in the past. But I'm going to do that, all the scripture verses that I read. And so you can focus on that. And so uh, God bless you. I hope this helps. And, uh, and I'm looking at the end, like I said, at the end of April, I'm going to Malaysia to be reunited with my wife. I'm going to make a lot of healing. We're, we are going to make a lot of healing videos in Malaysia. And they're going to be awesome. And so God bless you. Thanks for supporting Carbo Box Church. And thanks for watching.